Sorry, folks, we're, we're back on. Okay, we're back from recess on the special meeting. Staff has said they will need approximately 45 minutes or so to bring back responses to our discussion of a special meeting prior to us making a decision. So that gives us 45 minutes to try and do the council meeting for tonight. So with that, we're going to recess the special meeting again. And now we will call the city council meeting of October uh, 31st, Halloween night, 2006, to order at 6.17 p.m. We have a roll call for the city council. Council members Manukian? Here. Najarian? Quintero? Yusefian? Here. Mayor Weaver? Here. Just so the record notes, Mr. Quintero and Mr. Najarian are both here and partaking of some food at the moment, I think. Uh, so you make note. I don't think, Mr. Howard, is that okay to say they're here? Uh, they're actually not present Spirit. for purposes of the meeting. They're somewhere else. We know they're here in the building, but they're so not present they for in, purposes of the meeting. So when they come in, I can so note Mr. Well, Najarian oh, is come. here. Mr. Najarian is coming. As soon as, you, as soon as they come into the chambers, they'll be noted as present. Okay. Najarian is noted as present with all his faculties. Thanks for waiting, you guys. <laughs> <sighs> I know, I already made apologies for you. Okay, may we have your report? Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Black Slew tonight will be by Council Member Quintero. Who would, like like to Who would like to volunteer to? I'll do that. Okay, Mr. Yusef. <laughs> Mr. Yusef, and we'll do the Black Salute application by City Clerk Party Kosaki. Put your hand on your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening we give thanks for being citizens of this land of freedom and opportunity. We pray for guidance in the decisions we make and our actions as we live each day. We pray for all of the citizens of Glendale that we might live and work together in harmony, especially for our children this evening and their safety as they go trick-or-treating in our neighborhoods. We continue to pray for the safety of our military, for the loved ones of those who have been injured or have lost their lives. We pray for peace. May we go about the business of life, always mindful of our many blessings. Amen. Now, may we have your report. The agenda for the October 31st, 2006 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, October 26, 2006 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. And what is next? Next is presentation and appointments at 3A's agenda preview for the meeting of November 7th, 2006. Mr. McFall. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, next week there are a number of items to bring to your attention. On the Glendale Redevelopment Agency, uh, there will be a report from the Director of Development Services regarding a professional services agreement change order for various firms in connections with a number of uh, different uh, redevelopment agency project uh, consultants and contractors. Um, on November 7th next week at uh, 2.30, there will be a, another hearing, uh, the final uh, proposed final draft of the downtown specific plan that uh, you're considering uh, <coughs> this evening. Uh, on the city council agenda, uh, there will be two action items at this time. The uh, first is a uh, report from the city attorney providing authorization to allow the city manager to execute indemnity agreements uh, that do not exceed $50,000. And then secondly, a report from the Director of Parks and Recreation Community Services on impact fees. That's it. Thank you. Uh, what is next, please? At 3B is proclamation designating November 13th through the 19th, 2006 as California Retired Teachers Week. Okay. And the proclamation is going to be accepted by retired teachers Gertrude Ness and Robert Parkinson from Glendale Unified and Mary Beaumont from Burbank Unified. I, I wait for I'll, I'll read the proclamation first. Every year I go to the retired teachers <laughs> uh, dinner or whatever event in the afternoon. I bet you we retire 20, 30 teachers every year. I sure hope we're getting up new ones in. Anyhow, the proclamation reads, whereas California Retired Teachers Association 
an organization of retired teachers and interested persons, has had continuous growth since its founding in 1929. And whereas California Retired Teachers Association, Glendale Foothill Division, has a current membership of approximately 550, many of whom are active volunteers in the community. And whereas the purpose of the California Retired Teachers Association is to support public education, teachers, and provide statewide scholarships, maintain a mutual nonprofit, benevolent, and protective organization, safeguard public school teachers' retirement system, promote the welfare and social relationships of its members, support and support beneficial educational legislation and oppose detrimental legislation. And whereas California Retired Teachers Week was initiated uh, by the California uh, Retired Teachers Association to spotlight the extensive volunteer work that the members conduct in their local communities, whereas the purpose of this program is to highlight retired teachers' involvement in education and the community and to provide good role models. Now, therefore, I, Dave Weaver, Mayor of the City of Glendale, hereby proclaim November 13th through the 19th, 2006, as the California Retired Teachers Week and commend the California Retired Teachers <coughs> Association members for their dedication and valuable contributions over their many years of outstanding service to our youth and to our community. Mr. Mayor, it's my pleasure to present this proclamation. I'm sure that every one of us has had a, a teacher, at least one, who's made an impact on our lives and who have influenced the course of history. And it's wonderful that we're taking this opportunity to recognize the teachers, now retired, who have affected every one of us in positive ways. So I'd like to hand this to Mr. Parkinson. Yes. Congratulations. Do I have a response to make? Yes, you do. You certainly <clears throat> do. Say anything you like. Well, I thank the City Council for the recommendation and for the attention that's being paid to us who have taught for a good many years. My teaching experience uh, included 28 years in the senior high school level, 14 of which was in South Dakota and 14 of which was in Los Angeles up in Verdugo Hills High School in Tahunga. And I thank you for the recognition, and we feel we deserve it, of course, but thank you so much. Now, I am not Gertrude. Uh, she's a little under weather tonight, so on behalf, hi, Mom, I know she's probably watching. Uh, she watches all the t every week. And, um, but I want to accept the proclamation on her behalf for the California retired teachers. And I am a retired teacher, yes, but not as long as these two folks have been. And so, therefore, I don't qualify for the, the award, but it's nice to say thank you anyway for my mother. And is your mom the centenarian? She is the centenarian, yes. Yes, I yes. recognize the name. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, and, and this is very unusual for her not to be able to attend something, but she's yeah. just sort of... We've been celebrating all year, and I think it just caught up with her, finally, yes. So she's so, on the couch watching us. She probably is. She certainly is, sitting up. Too much yes. partying, huh? Too much partying, yes. Say, say hello to her. Yes, we will. Give her yeah, a yeah, we will. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. And now Bob is 96. Oh, oh, eight. Oh, oh. <laughs> My 98th birthday 98. is next week. Wow. Man. Oh, then he's 98, so he's, he's oh. nearing her mark. <laughs> there you go. Teaching uh, gives you a long oh, life. Oh, yeah. long life, yes. Thinking about what profession to get into. <laughs> and we do like to be remembered when we're gone. I mean, not dead, but out of school. Yeah, I was going to catch you on that oh, one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, what is next, please? And 3C is appointment of Mr. Zari Amirian to the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee for a three-year term to expire October 31, 2009, nominated by Council Member Nigerian. Mr. Jarian? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like at this time to make officially make the appointment to nominate Mr. Zara Amirian to the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call. Council Members Manukian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Yusefian? Aye. Mayor Weaver? Aye. Next, please. At 3D is appointment of Mr. George Adrian to the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at this point, I would like to appoint Mr. George Adrian 
to the Historic Preservation Commission, and you could talk about his qualifications, as you said last week. You want me to? Second. Yeah. Let's see. Sorry. Where is mine? The Weaver was hard to impress, but he was impressed. Yes, really, but where's... Oh, there it is. I got it. Let's see, he's a State of California registered architect, which is great. He's been in practice for many years, a number of companies. Um, he's the Secretary of the American Institute of Architects for the San Fernando Valley, Director of the American Institute of uh, Architects for the same group. Um, this is the one that really got to me. The State Board of Architectural Examiners. He co-authored uh, the site design section of the California State Registration Exam for other architects to be. So, and he also is a grader for the building design and site design section. So he's ultimately qualified to find somebody like that in our city to serve. I think it's a coup for this city. So he'd be an absolutely great person to have on along with his 25 years of uh, experience. So there's a motion. Is there a second? What was there? Second. Okay. The discussion roll call, please. Council members Mnookin? Yes. Njarian? Yes. Montero? Yes. Yusefian? Aye. Mayor Weaver? Aye. Uh, next, please. Three is proclamation designating November, tw November 2006 as Glendale Philanthropy Month. Okay, and I have two on this. Mr. Cantari, you have one. And Mr. Yusefian, you take the, oh, <laughs> the other. <laughs> uh, let's see, I have David Bogart. Yeah, you come up. Uh, we'll do the health care foundation, health care foundation, or Adventist Hospital first, Adventist Medical Center first. Get us straight. Uh, that's, that's F. David. Huh? He's doing EF. That's what I'm doing. But he didn't read F into the... David's the CEO and president of the Health Care uh, Foundation at Glendale Venice Medical Center. And the proclamation reads, whereas our community deserves local access to quality health care today and in the future, and whereas Glendale Adventist Medical Center is committed to promoting healing and wellness for each person of our community, and whereas the Health Care Foundation at Glendale Adventist Medical Center exists to, uh, to support the work and mission of Glendale Adventist Medical Center through philanthropy, and whereas by giving to the cause of health care we influence and improve our community far beyond our lifetimes, now therefore I, Dave Weaver, Mayor of the City of Glendale, do hereby proclaim the month of November 2006 as Glendale Philanthropy Month and commend the Health Care Foundation at Glendale Adventist Medical Center for striving to encourage people to share their passion for quality health care in the community by endowing their giving. And Mr. Yusefian. There we go. And I just want to let you know I have two appointments for two body scans at your health care oh, place. Really so I, I recommend people do that too. What, full body scan? Full body scan. From, a, from up here? Down? No, I don't. Want, there's nothing up there, so I don't want to worry. You, you heard it here, folks. There's nothing above <laughs> here. <laughs> no <laughs> problems <laughs> up there. No problems. Oh, problems. I thought you said there's nothing there. <laughs> May I make a couple of comments? Yes, go right ahead. I appreciate this from uh, the mayor and the city council very much. This really is in tandem with um, the next one you're going to give to the Glendale Community Foundation. Our foundation and the Glendale Community Foundation have partnered and are presenting a special movie premiere this Thursday night at the Alex Theater that's open to the public, everyone. And it highlights the importance of passing wealth from one generation to the next in a responsible manner and for also including in a charitable way um, different community organizations. It's a wonderful story done and we are the first to see it on the West Coast 
it'll be uh, brought to the public next spring. We uh, kind of by a fluke got in on early on it when it was planned to be released this fall and because of the elections next week they decided to postpone the movie till the spring but they said those that were signed up early can do it so we are the first and the only ones on the west coast uh, this fall to see it it's a great story it's family uh, friendly very clean it tells a great story it has a great worth uh, a great message to it and so um, we're not doing it as a, a fundraiser at all but uh, as an awareness event for the Community Foundation that we believe will be good for all the nonprofits in our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. And the next one presented to the Glendale Community Foundation Board of Trustees, Doris Boyer. Anybody with you? No, I'm all by myself. Not alone. Well, let me read the proclamation. Whereas our community needs, causes, and issues change con constantly and whereas those needs causes and issues will continue to change long beyond our lifetimes and whereas the Glendale Community Foundation serves as a philanthropic council or partner with local residents who have a passion for local philanthropy and whereas by leaving a legacy in our estate plans for good forever we influence and improve our community far beyond our lifetimes now therefore I Dave Weaver mayor of the city of Glendale do hereby proclaim the month of November 2006 as Glendale Philanthropy Month and commend the Glendale Community Foundation for its efforts to encourage people to share their passion for community by endowing their giving for good forever. Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great honor to receive this proclamation. I represent the, I'm the chair of our very active board of directors and our mission, we have donors who are advised on how to give charitable gifts. Our challenge is that there are so many worthy causes that we need to address. So it is a very interesting and very exciting uh, mission for all of us. Glendale is one of the two cities in the state of California that has its own community foundation. All the others are countywide, so we are uh, very uh, pleased to have this responsibility. This is our 50th year, 2006, so it is a great pleasure to do that. I have certainly uh, brought you greetings from the Board of Directors, and uh, it is a great pleasure to second our uh, uh, cooperation in the preview that we're having the movie on Thursday night but it's very typical of the foundation's cooperation with so many other organizations in town so it's a great pleasure and an honor to receive this from you the city of Glendale is always in the forefront when it comes to taking care of their citizens and we love being part of that effort thank you so much thank you Doris What is next, please? Oh, that covered F as well, which was the second proclamation designating November Glendale Philanthropy Month. So we move to four, which is city council and or staff comments. Yes, Mr. Nukian. Yes. Just, just to announce that on uh, this Thursday, I'll, I will be holding sidewalk office hours on uh, at the market on, on Brand, and on Sunday I will be at the market in Montrose. You. Mr. Najarian? Two items, Mr. Mayor. I know it was very uh, difficult this weekend for all you SC fans to see the, the storied SC team. Here at Trojan, uh, why would you bring that up? Go down and defeat. However, for those of you who need to root for a football team with a oh, long winning streak, Oxy. I'd like to bring to everyone's attention that in our neighboring community of Eagle Rock, we have the Occidental Tigers, who are now on a 24 game winning streak. A regular season they are ranked they're probably going to be in the top five in the country for division three the home of true scholar athletes uh, there are no there are no athletic scholarships awarded all those kids uh, they do their labs they do their uh, exams and their studies and then they hit the football field no Free ride, Councilmember Nigerian. It's where a, did you go to college? It's a high, um, it's a high school. You, right? you played college football, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> Occidental College was home to Jack Kemp, who was playing. You uh, didn't answer his won, question. Uh, <laughs> won several championships with the uh, the Buffalo Bills. Later went on to be a, uh, a congressman. You? 
Uh, no, it is a uh, it is a college, a fine college. And where did you go to school? I'm a I'm proud to say that I am an alumnus of Occidental College and uh, and a former football player and captain of the Occidental Tiger football team. And where else did you go? Uh, what was the record when you played? Uh, <laughs> we were just outside. We were just outside that 24 game winning streak. <laughs> Let's just uh, leave it at that. Full kind for you, you never attended SC. I did go to SC for law school. Thank you. So. Another one we should mention, because a former mayor, uh, Sheldon Baker, was in the office the other day. I remember all the years he was on council and we talked about Rutgers. Rutgers, where's that? Losing, losing. Now they're undefeated. Right. SC has been beaten, and they're still undefeated. Amazing. And he's heading back there to watch the game against Louisville next week. Amazing. Um, Times He's also undefeated. Yeah. Would they play the Matadors? <laughs> I don't know, but they're undefeated. That's all I know. The second item, Mr. Yes. Mayor, is a, is a little more serious. I think uh, many people in the community uh, are aware or became aware of an event that occurred on Brand Boulevard at Broadway uh, on Friday morning. It was a, a threat, a bomb threat on oh. one of the MTA buses, and I think I became aware of it uh, probably through the MTA uh, initially. But um, I decided to go down and see what was happening, and I would like to uh, commend our police department that uh, activated, I don't know how many uh, officers, along with our fire department that brought in their emergency response uh, headquarters. They've got a, a vehicle that opens up with the maps and communication system. They did have to evacuate some of the high-rise buildings right in that corridor there. Uh, could have been a very serious situation. Uh, but not only that, they worked very well with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department that was the investigating agency for that. And as everyone was from Glendale was pulled in to handle this uh, problem, uh, I saw our mutual aid with the Burbank Police Department. They sent their officers in uh, to perform the usual, uh, usual operations that our officers would otherwise be performing. So we're very fortunate nothing happened, but it was a great opportunity for all of our uh, local agencies uh, to work together. And hopefully, uh, God willing, we'll never have such an event as this, but it's good to know that on a moment's notice uh, we can mobilize. And there were many other city departments involved as well, but uh, they took it seriously and uh, mobilized uh, immediately. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll never have it happen. But it's good to know that uh, our, our officers and firefighters are professional and they're trained and they were up to the occasion. Thank you. As for me, one thing, uh, yesterday I was asked to go down to the roller rink down on San Fernando Road. There's a team there, you maybe saw the picture in the paper today, the roller skating team that is, has won the national championship there from Glendale and they're leaving in December to go to Spain to complete in the World Championships. Next year they'll be going to Australia uh, to compete. Uh, there are 15, 16 members on the team. They range in age from 13 to 52. They practice twice a week and they come as far away as Fresno to practice twice a week. They're really committed to it. One day they suspect it will become an Olympic event uh, during the summer. Uh, they, were, they did the routine for me that they're going to do in the World Championships, and I'm surprised they didn't collide with each other on some of their orchestrated moves. The lady that does the choreography uh, also uh, does similar th uh, projects for uh, Disney, so she's quite qualified to do it. Um, they'll be coming back. Um, competition's December 3rd. Uh, they'll be coming back, and I said I would invite them down here uh, so we can meet them all. That's uh, another amazing story of Glendale that we have out there that we really don't know exists in this community. National champions. We've had a few other groups mm -hmm. come in here, they're Glendale, and they're national champions. Uh, same with uh, my former, my daughter's former dance troupe in Glendale, Burbank area. And they're the world champions in Hawaiian dance. Again, another hidden group of talent of young people. So 
and let us know. We don't know everything up here, and let well, us know if I your did, group is they, they, achieving they, national recognition. Well, I, I didn't know about them. It's great, great to recognize. All the years I've been here, I, I, all my life, I didn't know there was a team like this. And uh, they really, uh, they're good. So we'll see what they do in the, Nash, in the World Championships. Okay, with that, Mr. Seffian? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to uh, remind people that uh, next week we're going to do something that uh, originally started with the Greeks and later on uh, uh, some of the Romans followed it uh, until somebody else came in and became czar and just kind of got rid of uh, Caesar and got rid of that. And it's called democracy and it's time for a vote. Uh, so I hope that you will take about five minutes out of your busy lives early in the morning or in the afternoon or sometime during the lunch. Uh, take your ballots and go down to the voting booth if you haven't voted absentee and exercise your good old American rights and uh, vote for what you believe in. And uh, that's what makes this country work. So don't forget, next Tuesday is Election Day. Go out there and do what you need to do. Thank you. And the next morning, no more commercials on TV or the radio. No more mailers in the mail. <laughs> and, and Mr. Mayor, I must tell you, uh, we thought that when we went through some of this election, it was pretty dirty. My God, the, the, some of the commercials, it's just incredible. It's just every year it just keeps getting worse and worse, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But okay. I'm not fooled by any of them, so. Good. Okay, what is next, please? Next is a consent items. The following are routine and may be acted upon by one motion. A member of the council or the audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such requests before a motion is proposed. Move 5A. Second. I mean, uh, move consent. Second. Okay, everybody was here? Yeah. Good. Roll call. Council members Manukian? Yes. Nijarian? Yes. Montero? Yes. Yusefian? Aye. Mayor Weaver? Aye. Next, please. Item 6 is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Council may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. See manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and report. First speaker, Nancy Stone. Hi, good evening. My name is Nancy Stone, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak in front of the City Council tonight and all the City of officials. I realize how dedicated you are, that a lot of you could be home with families and on this holiday, and I thank you for the work you're doing. And it's also nice to hear that there's still an undefeated team. I'm from UCLA, and we've really had a oh, hard time. Too bad. Yeah. Don't look so sad now. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't played OC yet, you know. Yeah, I know. Home. I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> I had wanted to address the council about um, the the um, um, Americana development, and I heard you had spoken about that this afternoon, and I apologize. I had gotten some misinformation, but I'd like to just speak a few minutes about that if I could. For many years, I was involved with a community group called Seeds of Peace. Seeds of Peace, as you know, was formed as a response to an alarming rise of youth violence and tragedies that occurred at our schools. Individuals from the city, school, business, and community, and many parents worked together to present forums and events that would encourage dialogue and understanding. One idea that came from those meetings was the idea to create a square or park dedicated to peace and unity. In the spring of 2001, we started talking to city council members. We also talked to Jeannie Armstrong, who was the head of the redevelopment at that time, and Nello, who was the head of Parks and Recreation. And of course, we attended a lot of the Caruso community meetings. We gathered support from the Glendale PTA Council, Re Religious Leaders Association, Character and Ethics Project, and many other community groups. But then, as we all know, there were many roadblocks and bumps along the way for the Americana Town Center. But thanks to the vision of a lot of people in this room, and of course the citizens of Glendale, the project is now underway. It's my hope tonight to renew a vision for the open space in the Americana development. Great, great squares and civic places like Trafalgar Square in London, St. Mark's Square in Venice, Thanksgiving Square in Dallas come to mind. Glendale would have its own distinct identity, 
Mr. Caruso is well known for creating beautiful spaces and designs. He uses some of the best architects in the country and the finest materials. I would like to appeal to his designers to be inspired by our community's vision. Imagine with me a grass amphitheater for community celebrations, choral groups, and orchestral programs. A bell tower that gently chimes at noon, calling for each of us to pray together for peace in our community and world and a restful garden where we can find refuge, beauty, and refreshment from our urban city. We are a cult culturally diverse community and at times a divided city, but I believe a peace and unity squ square would serve as the symbolic heart of our city. It would give our city a renewed sense of hope and a vision for the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, Timothy uh, Catledge. Did Mr. Milano write that for you? No. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. I think he shares your vision. Thank you. <laughs> Timothy, followed by Margaret Hammond. <clears throat> Hello, Mayor and uh, Council. My name is Timothy Catledge. And uh, first, I want to talk about something that's been in the news, which is uh, the Iraq War. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Bush, if you're, if you're listening to me, Please get those troops out of Iraq. We're losing too many troops out there. And uh, this is something that I was, when it happened, I said, go in there and get Saddam. And you killed off Saddam, which actually he was holding these different factions, Sunnis or whatever else they have in that country, which was causing a bunch of chaos holding them together. Now he's gone, and all they're interested in is killing each other or killing any kind of Americans that they catch around using bombs and everything. We're not safe over there. And you're not going to win a war, Mr. Bush, with your uh, path to victory, because there is no victory, because people are in a state of chaos. They haven't evolved. So they're just going to kill each other like animals. So... Mr. Bush, uh, would you please get out? And it doesn't matter who wins, whether the Iranian wins or, or they win. They're just going to have to grow up, and, and whatever the country evolves in, it's evolved. It's not our, we're not the father of their country. You know, we've been in there three years. We could be in there two or three more years. It, uh, you know, nothing's going to be stable about it. So we need to get out. You know, count our blessings, no more people will die, and uh, and start taking care of what's going on in America right now. And speaking of America, you see, people overseas in America, they fear us, but they don't respect us very good. If you notice that Korea is uh, want to do nuclear weapons and stuff like that. We used to be... I used to be proud to say United States of America, and I'm not proud of that now because of this old expression, united we stand, divided we fall, because now we have the biggest problem, which is uh, immigration, illegal immigration. They're trying to vote on that and trying to figure out what kind of concept or what kind of way we can handle this, you know. But the problem is, is that America is about, the true America is about BLC, borders, language, and culture. And if you got people speaking different languages, you got people uh, not appreciating what the American language or American culture is all about. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be united. Everybody's on in their own little separate worlds. And this is what makes America strong, because if we're talking in a central language and we're talking in a central culture, then we can understand each other and we can become friends. We can get neighbors, you know, and we can we can have a, a, a very resilient society. But everybody's doing something their own way. And, you know, it's, it's about their culture. It's about their language. Then, you know, the, um, <laughs> the United States is going down because everybody... And plus, people come in illegally. You know, it's, 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 it's drawing on our services. We can't provide for everybody. We can't provide for the people that are here. 
So, you know, we, we, we have to close down emergency rooms. We have to, uh, health care will get worse. You know, people on, on programs and special programs, you know, we got to provide all this and that for them, you know, provide all these different languages and stuff like that. Because it's like computers. How would you exist with computers on different languages? You know, most of your computers is in English. Very few of them are in foreign languages because they need to communicate with each other. So, so my final thing is, is that, you know, let's be a united United States, I strive for that, be uh, you know, united as a country. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret Hammond, followed by Herbert Milano. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, staff that's here, that aren't off working on whatever you told them to work on, huh? Um, all I have to say is... Um, for the last couple of days, my phone has been ringing off the hook uh, because of an article that was written in the newspaper. Oddly enough, I don't get the newspaper. My friend Dory down the street reads it and brings it to me. Um, and uh, so I haven't really seen it, but I got so many calls about it. And one of the things that really bothers me is that when people take what I am saying and want to make it a racist which I have never said anything about any race. Matter of fact, I think Mr. Manukin and I kind of went back and forth one night because, but I, that is not the point of why I was here. Uh, and then to take the attitude that because I don't agree with them, that uh, I should be uh, myself or be blackballed or whatever it is from groups and so forth that I'm. Uh, uh, attached to or part of. Uh, this is kind of not the American way. Um, we have a right to free speech, and just because we don't agree with people doesn't mean that we should be vengeful and nasty and uh, try to make more people angry at each other. That is not a good way to be because uh, we have enough to do to get through our regular lives. And the whole subject that this was on, of course, was the barbecue grilling uh, on different uh, aspects of the commercial grills with the, uh, in, the bar in the banquet halls. Um, when it came down to it, if the law had been obeyed for the last 10 years, uh, there would have been no discussion, there would have been no aggravation going on. And that is too bad, to have caused so much dissension between people over a subject that never should have come up. If the rules had been enforced, it never would have had to come down to people being angry and mad and being mean toward each other. So all I'm saying is that because I have no, nothing to make of it other than I feel that it was my right to come up and say I disagree that there should be an ordinance when there is already an ordinance on the books enforcing the law. So um, it is really sad. I know that a lot of my friends are very upset about it, and I just feel that it isn't really necessary. I mean, I don't agree with you lots of times, and you don't agree with me. But you're always civil to me when you meet me, and you don't, I know you don't feel that I'm just being um, crabby or something about some of the points. I feel it, again, for the quality of life for all of us in Glendale. That's really why I like to speak up, not for other reasons. I have no political ideas or anything like that. I just love my community. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. I'll see you Friday. Friday lunch. Me too. You gonna be there? I'm yeah. not at your table, though. That's a good thing, maybe. They're fighting over me, Dave. They're fi oh, <laughs> lucky guy. Mr. Milano. Members of the City Council and City staff, my name is Herbert Milano. That's, uh, those were some wonderful words that uh, Margaret used, and she continues to, uh, to be my inspiration. Her resilience, her belief, and her steadfast devotion to this city. It's just, am I doing a commendation? Almost, isn't it? It really is really something special. The, uh, we have so many gems just like her, 
and I'm so privileged to know. I wanted to come back to, to the issue of vision because it appears that the definitions given to us by staff were deficient. Vision is what is truly missing in practically every candidate statement that has ever run for city council, with perhaps the exception of John Draymond. I think that anyone who runs for office must state clearly what their vision for the city is, and not in vague terms, not I want a vibrant city as if they're waiting for the next earthquake to, to come in. You know, something tangible that tells us what it is that we want to see in the future. And in management and in my consulting, what we do is we try to put the words into that vision statement that can be measured. And if you can't measure it, we take it out of that vision statement. So if you can measure vibrancy, you take it out. If you say open space, you say, how are you going to measure it? If you say develop parks, how are you going to measure it? And from that position, you work towards creating a strategic plan that gives you the roadway. If you're going to head out to Dallas, you take this particular roadway going east. You don't take the roadway going north. So all along, you know the steps that you need to take to get to that destination. And that's my objective here. My objective has been significantly towards creating transparency and openness, to ask from every city department basic core functional questions with regard to the performance of the city. Sewers, roads, parks, sidewalks, open space, trees, parks, swimming pools. We should have a definitive statement as to what it is that we want to achieve so we can hold you accountable. We cannot hold you accountable to the word vibrancy. You know, hey, my wife and I went dancing last week. That was really vibrant. Give us something tangible. And that's why I think that whenever there is influences that are outside of the influence of the residents, that it becomes problematic. To run a, a, a race, you need $100,000 here in Glendale. So you may start with a kitty of $60,000. Where does it come from? Where do we, the residents, come in and say, are you truly attending to our needs? So that you don't come out and say anything that you want unless we hold you accountable. If you say, I'm in favor of creating a municipal swimming pool. All right, well, tell us how you're going to achieve it. Tell us how we measure it so that later on we can say, oh, you did achieve what you stated in your campaign statements. We have Proposition 89 coming up next Tuesday. And I'm in favor of Proposition 89, and I think that everyone should really take a hard look at it. And my suggestion is that they vote for it. Because we need to change the way we finance our campaigns. At our last campaign, Mr. Frank Inter, our councilman, said that he wanted to limit his campaign contributions to $500. I think Burbank has a better idea, 250 But anyone running for city council will be a fool to say accept $250 or 500 because you guys got a tremendous war chest. And that is the difficulty in all of our elections, local, county, state, federal. The influence of money is so pervasive that the resident, the citizens, the common folk, no longer have any say-so in their government. You know, a big pharmaceutical company comes in, and all of a sudden we get all kinds of um, proposals coming in where they are not fully tested, where products are released, you know, and we suffer for it. Petroleum companies do it, we suffer for it. Energy companies do it, we suffer for it. We need to restore democracy, and that means that everyone has an equal chance of creating or deciding on a vote based upon quality information. It's really that simple. And to promote that, it seems like it's, it's an uphill battle that, is, that we have to fight. I wish that this city council will initiate a referent, uh, an initiative or some kind that we put on the, on the ballot to basically have the type of laws that Burbank has. And if you ever watch their last uh, meetings, you will see it's a very big difference from them to us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's end of oral communications. What is next, please? Where? May I be permitted to make a couple of comments? Sure, go ahead. We're on Thank time. you. And, and, and I think I understand what Mr. Milano and the speakers are saying. 
And I, I like I like to explain one thing. The way our system works is we garner about one fifth of the vote on a dais. Not one person can achieve his or her vision all by themselves. I may have a certain vision, but it may not match the vision of the other four. So what happens is you go out there and you campaign and you talk about your vision, but the reality is you have to convince at least two other people, in some cases four other people, to get your vision done. I mean, sorry, uh, two or three people. Uh, so it's disingenuous for any candidate to go out there and say, you know what, my vision is to do a pool, and I promise you a pool. Because the reality is, unless he can guarantee two other votes, he ain't getting that pool. That's how the system is set up. I understand your frustration. And if he can guarantee two other votes, what happens? Then he is violating the ground. Act. That's right. <laughs> but the, the reality is, I understand your frustration. You want something tangible. You could go out there and hold the, the politicians responsible. So do I. Because outside of city council, I'm also a resident of the state of California and also a resident of the United States. And I went and saw this new movie called uh, Man of the Year. And I thought Robin Williams pretty much spelled out some of the frustrations that I feel, and probably all of us feel, about how the whole system is set up. But in the end of the day, when I sit down and I think about it, what other system is there? Is it perfect? No. Does it have challenges? Yes. But we try to do the best, at least I try to do the best, of what I have. I didn't choose to serve by my colleagues. The people of Glendale... I thought you did. No, I didn't. The people of Glendale made That's that like choice. <laughs> they said, you, Bob, will serve with Ara and Dave and Rafi and Mr. Contrero. That's what we have chosen in our own wise decision. And just because some people vote for me doesn't necessarily mean they voted for them also. So we have diff sometimes different constituency. But in the end of the day, the system is designed in such fashion that we all come in from diverse groups, diverse mindset, diverse ideology, come in here, we talk, we debate, and somewhere down the line, we reach a point that we can get something done. There is enough of a give or take to get something done. Is it everything I want or what they want? I don't think it is. Once in a blue moon, we strike it good so we all get what we want. But I understand your frustration, and I have the same frustration. And if I sometimes think about it. If five of us are having such a hard time, can you imagine what it is to be in Congress? with over 400 and so many rep House of Representatives or, yeah. or 100 con uh, senators, that's even more difficult. Uh, okay. Mr. Najari, it's turn. I just want to address the concept of a vision. And, and, and I guess Mr. Milano's point that a vision should be quantitative, that your vision should be measured. Um, and I don't think that's so. I think production goals should be quantitative. I think a prospectus for a company selling their stock on the stock exchange should be quantitative. I think a vision should be qualitative. A vision is something that you're seeing in the future, far out, and it encompasses many things. And when I think about perhaps one of the greatest visionaries um, of our time, Martin Luther King, his I Have a Dream speech. And no one can argue that that was not a visionary speech. At no point in his speech did he say, I want 82% of black youth to graduate from high school. It was all in qualitative terms that one day black children and white children will hold hands and walk down that road together. Now, that's qualitative stuff. Well, there's two hands, I guess, Mr. Milan, if you want to count hands. But for me, a vision is qualitative. 
and to put numbers on it cheapens your vision. It sets you up for a, a short goal, a short bar, which you know you can jump over. And if you set that bar higher, it sets you up for failure from your detractors. Um, and that's my opinion. You're certainly entitled to your opinion. Uh, we come from different backgrounds, uh, different experiences, and different educations. But when I talk about vision, that's what I have in my mind. Uh, let, let, let me weigh in, too. I mean, being a lifelong resident here, I still remember back in the 70s saying, if I was ever on city council, would I change this? And when I got elected to city council, I found out how naive I was to think that my visions were going to happen because I wanted them. When it takes at least two others to agree with me on anything like that. I've waited 10 years to try to handle downtown zoning and traffic situations. And here in my 10th year tonight, maybe we'll get everything but the mobility plan done. 10 years. Um, I also learned on here, I wanted desperately for a park across the street. I tried every bit of technical, I read everything I could, I pushed as hard as I could to have that park over there. I laid out how you could put a couple soccer fields on them, baseball fields, whatever. And it was in the very area that according to all our information, the area across the street needed a park more than any other location in the city of Glendale, including South Glendale. And we lost three to two. Um, yeah, I had a vision for something there, and it didn't happen. I also remember talking to a councilman who served here in the 1980s, and I asked him, how much did you spend on your campaign? He spent $700, and he got elected. The reality today, you don't spend $700. You, that barely gets you the statement no, that you're running more. for council. It's more. Wait until you run. Oh, it's going to be more now? It's going to be more. So things have dramatically changed. Um, reality is totally different than, um, than what you think. You get on with these great ideas, and it just doesn't happen in a vacuum, no matter how much. It really comes down to why do you put out a campaign brochure or something, say, I'm going to reduce traffic, I'm going to protect the hillsides, when in reality, you're not going to do it alone. I've tried to... I had visions of strengthening the hillside ordinance. Still hasn't happened. Um, it, it, it's tough. People don't understand that. They get on, sit here a few years, then they'll find out it's not what you think it is. So having concluded that, uh, let's go on because I see our Wait team is back. Are, oh, you want to weigh in? essays in political <laughs> philosophy <laughs> and public administration? I, I mean, know Mr. Mr. Mnuchin and I have... Uh, you want to weigh in? No, I'm have just kidding. Uh, I have a different enough, vision thanks. of the whole <laughs> issue. <laughs> have a seat of that at finishing the city council. We're talking philosophical here, so... Killing time while they come in. So yeah, have a seat a minute. We're almost wrapped up here. I Mr. Kinteri, you said? Oh, all right. Well, I want to I've, say I've heard enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's you Halloween after all. Okay. Remember that. Today I received my second master's degree in, uh, in vision statements and what is and what is not. So. When are you going to oh, get okay. a doctorate? A doctorate? I'll leave it out to Mr. Milano. Oh. Okay. Well, that takes care of our communications. What's next, please? Well... There's nothing else. Oh, yes, I there have is. New we have new business. Yes. Is there a new business? See? Yes, there is. All righty. Okay, Mr. Mnuchin first, and then Mr. Yes, Majari. I, uh, I move that the, that the offer of Mark and Eileen du Duby, is it Duby? To, com to compromise and settle their claim against the city of Glendale for the sum, sum of $11,211.24 be and the same is hereby approved and accepted, and the director of finance is authorized to, I to issue a warrant and the total sum for delivery by the city attorney upon the receipt of releases and an, in, and an indemnification agreement. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council members Mnookin? Yes. Njarian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Yousefian? Aye. Mayor Weaver? Aye. Mr. Njarian? 
Mr. Mayor, I move that the Council of the City of Glendale hereby authorizes the City Attorney to institute legal proceedings against Grandview Memorial Park, Incorporated, and others in order to recover the balances past due on delinquent Glendale Water and Power Utility accounts. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council Members Manukian? Yes. Majorian? Yes. Montero? Yes. Yusefian? Aye. Mayor Weaver? Aye. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, council stands adjourned at 7, 10 p.m. We will now come out of recess of the special meeting, and I'll turn back to Mr. Starbird. And I'll turn to Elaine Wilkerson. Elaine, you might touch first on sort of the organization of the response. Uh, yes, sir. We have uh, some materials to hand out to you. There will be a copy of the letter that Mr. Henning um, gave us this evening and a copy of the letter from his traffic consultants. And um, Allison Rondoni is going to uh, do the response to the EIR issues that are raised in that letter. And I think there's uh, one or two other issues that came up through the EIR area. And then Hassan Aghani and uh, Alan Loomis will be covering the, the public input on the downtown specific plan and then subsequently um, they'll talk about the, the issues that were raised in the PowerPoint.